Hello and welcome to the Tough Girl podcast, which is all about motivating and inspiring you. I'm your host, Sarah Williams. The Tough Girl podcast is sponsorship and ad free thanks to the monthly financial support of patrons. To find out more about supporting the Tough Girl podcast and becoming a patron, please check out Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com forward slash Tough Girl podcast. All patrons will get their name on a dedicated patrons page on the Tough Girl website. All female patrons, $5 and above, are invited to join the closed Facebook group, the Tough Girl tribe. Today I'm absolutely delighted that we're going to be speaking to Sean Ann Lewis who is an award-winning travel and outdoor journalist, blogger and presenter. Sean's award-winning blog thegirloutdoors.com is all about finding happiness outside and promoting easy adventures that beginners can try. So my name is Sean Lewis and I'm a travel and outdoor writer and blogger um, and I've been writing about the great outdoors for about a decade now and I cover lots of things, travelling, camping, different sports, anything that gets you outdoors and into the fresh air but uh, my angle is usually quite beginner friendly approaches to trying things like camping and swimming and travelling and I mainly write for young women. I've got my own blog, The Girl Outdoors, which um, again is aimed at encouraging people to get outside and try new things and find the confidence to give new sports and new activities a go Um, and yeah and I really love the outdoors myself and writing about it is a really nice way to encourage myself to get out more and more so um, whenever I can I like to be out and about getting active and getting yeah and getting out in the, the wild world really. Oh, that is so fantastic. <laughs> so tell me, when you were growing up, was the outdoors a big part of your life? Did you come from an outdoorsy family? You know, what was life like for you? It, well, we didn't know, I didn't have a hugely outdoorsy family. Um, we used to do a lot of walking and hiking. My dad is still really into walking. Um, so we go off on long walks with him. Um, and we lived in London when I was small. So I think that contrast of living in a really built up city and um, in a city life and then getting out into beautiful places, into forests, into national parks has always really stayed with me. And actually that it's really easy when you have a bit of free time to just pick up and go and end up somewhere completely different um, where you can be um, in a much more kind of in an open landscape and get some fresh air and just escape from city life. So I remember that really clearly. And um, we used to go camping too. And I remember that even when I was really little, the best thing ever was getting to set up a tent in the back garden and play at camping. But we didn't do loads of sports. You know, I never did things like, um, you know, I had a bike and stuff, but I wasn't really in a massively sporty family. But I was definitely in a family where I was encouraged to do whatever I wanted, which I think is really important, um, especially when you're a young girl growing up but it was more at university when I realized that there were a million amazing clubs and different things I could go and try and I just got so overexcited when I realized that suddenly I could do anything I wanted and learn to surf and learn to climb mountains and get out on my bike because you have a lot more free time at uni I guess so that was when I, I suddenly felt like I could go off and explore and and try loads of new things. So where did you go to university and what were you studying? I went to University of Bath and I studied Italian for no real reason, mainly because I wanted to go to uni and I realised that if you studied Italian, you got to go and live in Italy for a year. So I decided that was a very clever idea. (laughs) So that was when I went to study. But actually, while I was there, I um, ended up working on the university newspaper, which I think for a lot of people is how they get into journalism, because you get to have a good go at working on a on a kind of almost like a pretend newspaper or a magazine and and try out um, kind of what it's like to work on an editorial team. And I absolutely loved it. So after I finished university, I went and did a master's in journalism. And while I was there, I started my blog. And that was kind of the beginning of, yeah, of my career path. When you're at university, what sort of clubs and societies were you joining? So I basically, I just went around to the Freshers Week and suddenly realized that there were so many exciting sports and activities that I'd never tried um I guess yeah I was only 18 and I suddenly thought why have I never learned to surf why have I never been mountaineering there's so many things I could do so I basically signed up to all of them <laughs> um I did yeah my grades definitely suffered for the first year but um so I immediately joined the surfing society um and I'd never surfed before um I don't think I was even that good a swimmer and that was a great introduction to yeah to just a sport I really wanted to do and we used to go out and just get in the sea all year round and I'm still not a great surfer but I just absolutely fell in love with it and that was quite a good example of being a complete beginner at something but realizing that you don't have to be amazing at a sport to to really love it and that you can kind of kind of grow your confidence quite easily and um, getting out in the sea getting better at swimming and just going surfing regularly with friends was was a really good introduction to 
kind of outdoorsy outdoors pursuits in general and I realized that I could I could do these things and I could get out in nature really often and yeah and just and feel really confident in a in what could be like maybe quite a challenging environment um and yeah so that was just a great way to learn to surf and I also started to do a lot of hiking I started to do camping with friends um yeah just just anything I could do really any weekend I had free I was always wanted to be outdoors did things like skydiving I basically signed up to everything um and that was the beginning of just of just wanting to be outdoors all the time <laughs> yeah no, I love this like this is the great thing about when you do go to university you get access to all these clubs and societies and you can go surfing go hiking go camping yeah learn these amazing skills and then let's talk about so you joined the newspaper found journalism found your passion ended up doing a master's in it and then tell us more about starting up your blog the girl outdoors was this purely a passion project what was the reason behind it yeah, sure. So um, when I was studying journalism, I mean, this was 10 years ago, but I think it was already very clear that journalism was going towards, um, you know, to, to all being online. And that's very much what's happened. And I kind of thought, right, well, maybe it would be cool to have, I had a look around for kind of what I wanted was a website for young women like me who weren't, who weren't kind of into maybe like real extreme sports or who weren't athletes, who weren't very good, <laughs> you know, who weren't going to be professional kind of um, outdoors women who just really like getting outdoors um, and especially something for younger women and there just wasn't really much out there back then um, that has really changed now and um, I did want to start my own blog to have a bit of a kind of um, an online presence and to practice writing and to write about what I really loved so it just kind of made sense and I decided to start my blog and once I'd started it, it was a brilliant virtuous circle because I wanted to write more about getting outdoors. I would get outdoors more and then I'd write about it and then I'd go, oh, great, well, I need to get outdoors more and write more for my blog. And I just loved it from from the get go, um, which I think is important. I think if you're going to get into something like that, if you really, truly love what you're writing about, it's it makes it a lot easier. It's a passion. So you don't kind of sit there and go, oh, God, I need to write something new for my blog. You just it's just such a joy. Um, and it still is. So, yes, yeah, so I've been doing that for 10 years. And um which is, yeah, I can't quite believe, but um, that was how I started it. And if I look back now at some of the early blog posts, they are really funny. But um, I just used to write anything I liked about what I was up to or where I was going. And yeah, I just really, really enjoyed it. And um, I've just been doing it ever since, really. Uh, last year, I turned my kind of blog concept into a book, which is out now too. And that was actually quite different, kind of taking that idea and reshaping it into into a long form book but that was a new challenge which is quite good because there's another way to kind of keep keep the passion alive for it but yeah still going strong you must have been such a pioneer like in this <laughs> in this space like back in 2009 I mean what was there much stuff for women who like to get outdoors like I I, I can't even what was I doing I can't uh, I was working <laughs> so I, uh, I actually had no concept of what was going in the out in the outdoor adventure space there definitely were and there you know there were some long-standing ty- you know the surf girl magazine I think cooler was around then which um, is now online but that was a really cool magazine um there were plenty of magazines that maybe weren't female specific but had that kind of let's get outside angle you know um tgo magazine but i kind of what i wanted was a magazine for i then i was in my early 20s or a magazine or a blog or something that just was a bit more i guess a bit more you know matey and relaxed and not trying to not trying to just be be too pro really and i still think actually in kind of extreme sports and the outdoors a lot of what you see especially in kind of things like advertising it does still look really slick and pro and um you see all this kind of stuff about amazing athletes and they're so cool but I just think there's not always that representation for the normal woman who has a job and has a social life and also just wants to get outdoors and and just really and just for the joy of it so that was kind of what I was looking for but um I do think now it's really changed and there are tons of amazing websites and plenty of people on things on social media who are getting outdoors as much as they can and loving it you know with kids or around their job or just in their local area and I think that has really really changed now which I love to see I'm really happy to see that there's this huge community of of amazing women who just who just have that's their passion but yeah so it has changed a lot but that's just it's just lovely to watch it change when did it start changing for you in terms of the blog in terms of did you turn it into a full-time job was that like sort of your goal originally or you know how did it evolve yeah well it was never really my goal I just enjoyed it and I did want to work in outdoor journalism or travel journalism and it was quite a good 
um, a bit of a CV as well because it showed my writing skills and it showed what I really loved. Um, and it led to my second job in journalism. I worked for Country File at the BBC and that was quite a useful tool to show them that I did really love the outdoors and hiking and, um, you know, that, that was my passion. Um, so it was, I do think, in general, it's always a good idea to whatever you're into in the outdoors, if you're into, for example, outdoor photography, having a good website that shows what you do and um, and what you love is really useful to show if you're trying to get into this kind of, um, you know, this kind of way of working, show what you do is great. So, so I used it for that. And I never really thought it would be a full time business. And I still do my own freelance journalism. So I'm I do a lot of travel writing. I do kit reviews for newspapers and magazines. Um, yes, I travel a lot for work. So I'd say about half of my working life is my blog and about half of it is other stuff. I also now edit um, a magazine called Active Traveller, which is an annual magazine. So a few days a week, I'm actually in an office working on on a magazine, So which is quite nice as well, because I think it's quite nice to have that mix. You know, I do a few days in an office, a few days working from home, and then I also get time to get outdoors every week. So it's quite a nice balance. But yeah, no, I've never done the blog full time and I just think that's quite nice because you don't get overwhelmed by it or start to resent it I always really love working on it and um and it's just yeah it's just always kind of something that it's just my passion project I guess I think it can be quite tough if something if you want to turn something like that into your full-time job it can be an exhausting road trying to make something like that pay all the time and I think actually having a few different jobs the way loads of us do I think now at our age but um this kind of generation now it's very normal to do lots of different things and um, maybe work on something that you you're really into on the side of a job but I actually think that's quite a nice way to work and we're quite lucky that we get to mix it up so yeah. so yeah no that's fantastic and I agree so much with what you're saying and I think the, the words that's coming out is actually it sounds like you've got such a nice balance between your passion problem your passion projects you know the full, full-time work working on the magazine doing what you love and still getting to do like the, the kit reviews and do the travel and go to festivals and yeah exactly I, I like it and um, I think it's quite nice because you don't get too wrapped up in in one big project that way what piece of content are you most proud of producing for the girl outdoors oh that's such a hard one (laughs) so my favorite I like writing kind of either first person travel pieces or advice pieces that I really hope are going to help people um so I, I did a piece actually that was one of my favorites which was basically about how to how to go traveling on your own solo travel which I think can be a big um it's it's a big step to take confidence wise which I totally understand and I still find solo travel challenging but also really exciting and I asked lots of fellow kind of female outdoors women for advice and just got such lovely advice and it really it was it's a really nice piece that I always look back on fondly and it's done really well as well I think readers really like it and I think it was a nice one because it reminded me that there's loads of amazing women out there who are confidently exploring on their own and sometimes hearing from fellow you know from from other people that they're doing it is you just kind of remember that in your heart when you feel a bit scared and um, it's just nice to remember that lots of people are out there exploring on their own so I I always really love that article Um, and in terms of what does kind of well with readers I think I've noticed that people really like reading things about um, wild swimming and wild camping and those little adventures that maybe if you've never done them before you might look for a bit of advice for example I don't know if you wanted to go bivy bag camping you might have a quick read of how to do that or what to how to kind of set up your bivy bag but then you can go out and it's an easy cheap little adventure you can fit into your to a busy life or articles like that always do really well and that makes me really happy because that's exactly what I like as well (laughs) so so yeah that's what I'm trying to trying to work on at the moment is fitting in lots of content of kind of um, inspiring little adventures that you can fit in easily that are cheap and quick to quick to go off and do and you can fit around fit around your life. Yeah, I'd love for you to share some more of those like little adventures that you've done that have fitted around your life. What I mean, what have you been up to recently? Sure. Well, um, because you know, I'm I do you know I have a working a working week, which I didn't, <laughs> and um, you know, every, we've all got busy things going on in our lives. People have kids, we have friends, we have social obligations, we have work obligations. So I think this this idea of kind of you know this that kind of message of oh quit your job and go traveling around the world it's amazing, and I think that's really cool. But if you can't do that, then I think there's there's also a lot to be said for just fitting in the outdoors when and where you can. So I do a lot of just, I live in Bristol. So, you know, I live in a city and I just love escaping and hopping over to the Brecon Beacons and going camping or wild camping in the mountains 
um, quite often I'll take my bivy bag um, and a friend and I will just head over to the mountains, maybe even after work and climb a mountain and, and sleep in a bivy bag and wake up and head back down and, you know, do something else with the weekend. And I think that's actually probably one of my favourite adventures. So this weekend we went while camping near a river. So we woke up and all just got in the river for a swim. And it was, as you know, it's been super hot. And yeah, it wasn't it wasn't a crazy adventure, but it was just one of my favourites. And I actually think, although I travel a lot for work, so I, I, you know, I go quite far. The adventures that I always remember and think of really fondly are the little ones that are near home, where it's all very easy and relaxed, and you're in nature, and you don't need a lot of gear. You know, you have a tent or a bivy bag and a swimming costume, and that's all you need to to have a really, really good time on your own or with your friends. So yes, yeah, so that's what I'm always like planning, and I like planning them as well because you can fit them in around other stuff. What do you think has been your biggest challenge in the outdoors? Yeah, definitely big mountains and dealing with altitude um, because I find that I really, really love heading into the kind of big mountain ranges, but I do find altitude quite an interesting challenge. So the first time I kind of encountered it was when I climbed Mount Kenya and um, it's just so intense when you're doing a multi-day attempt on a summit and you're kind of getting it up at the crack of dawn and trying to trying to battle through altitude, kind of the side effects of it. I think that's quite um, an intense feeling. And then um, last summer, I spent six weeks living in the Himalayas, set up a base camp and um, just, yeah, just hiking into really high mountain ranges, incredibly remote areas. And I think you just have to be really kind of really careful that you're looking after your body because you're putting under a lot of stress. Um, and just yeah dealing with altitude I think is quite interesting and you just need to be quite careful but the rewards are incredible because being up in really high mountain ranges is just so so beautiful and it feels so removed from civilization and you feel like you're in a really wild place and there's something so lovely about conquering a mountain it's just kind of like a simple goal Um, and I think that's something where I'm trying to also improve my skill set you know learn more about navigation and self-sufficient hiking and camping for longer periods of time that's the great thing about the outdoors there's always so much more to learn so so yeah I think my biggest challenges are probably attempting big mountain climbs tell us more about the Himalayas and your six weeks over there what was that like and why were you over there what were you doing yeah so I do volunteering with the um, British Exploring Society who take young people on um, really kind of like life-changing trips into really remote parts of the world. So they go to the Amazon, to the Himalayas, um, to really incredible places. Um, And I work as a volunteer leader. So a team of leaders will look after these young people. Um, And actually, the the young people were incredible on my trip. They were so capable and amazing. I learned a lot from them as well. But um, the idea is that you go off and, and just kind of it's quite a big challenge. So we headed up into the Indian Himalayas and set up a base camp that I think, if I remember rightly, was above 5,000 metres. So it was really, really high. We had to acclimatise for weeks on the way to base camp. And then we set off to climb quite often unclimbed peaks, which was really, really cool. And it's a lot of it's about just working as a team and making sure everybody's happy and healthy and and living in an incredibly remote place. And, you know, we it was a great lesson as well for me and how little you need day by day and how you can live without creating a lot of trash, which is also something I think that we're all working on a lot these days, you know, like making sure that you're kind of a bit more self-sufficient. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was an incredible challenge and um, it was so much fun, but it was also pretty exhausting. <laughs> how long have you been volunteering for? Uh, so that was my first big trip with British Exploring Society, but I do quite a lot of different bits and bobs of volunteering in lots of in lots of you know different forms myself um but this was the first kind of expedition as they call them that I'd done with them but yeah it was amazing that's super cool have, have you done stuff like the Duke of Edinburgh award have you got like your mountain leader qualification have you got anything like that no I have nothing like that I'm currently doing um a wilderness first aid course just because I feel like I'd like to know more about that um, and just have a bit more confidence in I have a first aid kit and I'm always thinking, actually, I don't really know how to use this. Um, I grew up abroad. I grew up in southern Spain. So sadly, I didn't have a chance to do the Duke of Edinburgh Award, but I think it's incredible. I give out the uh, gold awards sometimes um, to Duke of Edinburgh participants and hearing them and hearing the confidence that they've gained from, from doing their qualification. It makes me think that's such a valuable skill to have before going off and doing a career you know having that that confidence in your own ability in the outdoors is amazing so I definitely recommend courses like that but um sadly I didn't get a chance to do it myself I'd love to hear more about your book as well so your book came out in 2018 and you uh, yeah. explain look more about like the concept what are the different things that you cover off in the book and what you're most proud of about it 
Yeah, the book, it was such a joy doing the book. Um, it was, I basically went to Bloomsbury and said, hey, I have this blog and I think it would be a nice book concept. And they were really on board, which was amazing. And I think the whole point of the book is that it's a bit of a, it's just a useful kind of friendly companion for anyone who really wants to get outdoors more or travel more or just, yeah, get get out and get exploring, but maybe lacks a bit of confidence or isn't quite sure how to try certain things. So it's um, it's got everything, really. It's got um, introductions to things like wild camping, wild swimming, but there's also um, a section on kind of well-being and getting out in nature, cooking outdoors. And then there's a big section on how to travel alone, how to maybe do long-term travels if you're planning a gap year or or something like that, solo travel, volunteering. And then there's a whole section at the front which is dedicated to trying new sports and activities that you might be keen to try but you're not really sure how they work so if, for example you've never been skiing before it's a bit you know these kind of sports where you think oh that's cool but none of my mates do I'm not really sure how it works climbing is another one I think people are maybe a bit intimidated to try and actually there's some amazing communities and ways to try all of them quite often closer to you than you think so it's just a bit of an introduction to 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 yeah to getting out and um, gaining confidence and just getting that little bit of extra info to give you a nudge in the right direction. I mean, one of the things you've talked about there is is having the confidence or women lacking the confidence to, to do these things. Where should women start? How do they start? Like, what advice would you have for them? Yeah, sure. I mean, I see it all the time. I get a lot of emails um, from women, especially from younger women, who really want to do more, you know, more things outdoors, but do feel that they don't have that confidence. So they don't know how to take the first step to get that confidence. Um, and I think that's totally, you know, that's totally normal and understandable. And I think the, for me, the, the the advice that I would give is to 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 not kind of you know run before you can walk and to take small steps to to building that confidence in what you want to try and you'll kind of build that that just a confidence level and that knowledge and you'll keep improving and I think really quickly you'll find that you that you absolutely love it so for example if you wanted to try say climbing the best thing to do is to find a course or maybe a female only group I know there's one at my local climbing gym that you can go to which is just for women female beginners so there's loads of ways that you can find like a really inclusive friendly way to learn and I think arming yourself with with a good amount of knowledge is really important so if for example you love to try winter mountaineering there are fantastic weekend courses you can try where you're going to be shown all of the basics you're going to be um, taught all of those kind of fundamentals you need to know and it's going to give you that that good base of confidence and you can practice those skills until you feel like you can go off and do it on your own and the more you practice and the more you realize you can do yourself you'll get that kind of innate confidence level to maybe try it yourself you know to go off and, and try it alone and I think you'd be astonished at how much you can achieve once you get started but what you don't want to do is maybe try something too much and scare yourself. So I always go for the kind of somebody, get somebody to teach me option because I love having the basic um, information and knowing that I'm doing something right or, or practicing skills and then getting out by myself. The other great thing you can do is ask a friend who maybe knows more than you and get them to take you out. So, for example, when I first went wild camping, I would always just get mates. <laughs> I would just nag my friends who were much more experienced and, and go camping with them. And I think that's a really good way to make sure you're safe and you're happy and you're comfortable. Because I think it is about getting out of your comfort zone, but not you don't want to, you know, you don't want to scare yourself silly. It's meant to be fun. I think this idea that maybe at the outdoors is this really gnarly, rugged, you know, tough environment I think the whole point is it is meant to be really fun. So just making sure it is fun for you is is important. You know, if you've never really camped, for example, going wild camping in the pouring rain probably isn't going to be your first starting point. You're probably not going to have a good time. But if you go on a summer's evening and, you know, um, a lovely starry night and you pick a nice campsite, you're probably going to have a lot more fun and um, and want to go back. <laughs> Absolutely. So the title of your book, The Girl Outdoor, is The Wild Girl's Guide to Adventure, Travel and Wellbeing. Tell me more, a little bit more about sort of wild swimming. When was the first time that you went wild swimming? What was it like? What did you enjoy? What, what were the things that you didn't like? What did you learn from that experience? Sure. Well, um, I've actually been wild swimming my whole life because my uh, wonderful grandmother uh, was really into swimming and she was a, I guess she was a cold water swimmer before we even called them that. So she used to make me go in the sea with her when I was five or six and I just thought it was absolutely brilliant. So um, I think that is probably one of those things where the earlier you start, the less you you care about, you know, being chilly because you're just used to it. But um, so yes, I've been swimming my whole life and I think wild swimming, I mean, obviously now it is 
it is having a huge um, surge in popularity. But for me, it was always just swimming, <laughs> outdoor swimming. But um, I have absolutely always loved it. And it's something that I will always go back to, you know, time and time again, because it's such an incredible way to to get outdoors and also to kind of find a bit of mind, mindfulness if you're having a, a busy day or you're feeling a bit stressed. I think being in in cold water is just this incredibly relaxing thing that's really, really good for you mentally and physically. Um, and also, I think if you live in a city, you might think, oh, I don't really know where to swim. But there's loads and loads of places that are actually quite close to cities where you can swim in lakes and rivers or get in the sea. And it's also, if you can swim, it's a really easy way to get outdoors um and you can you know you can swim really confidently there's loads of places where you can you don't have to get out of your depth even you know you can just kind of swim on a shallow lake or or on a kind of riverbed so I think it's a very accessible thing as well although it is something where people do need to kind of practice caution and make sure they're staying safe because it can be very dangerous in certain places so that's a, that's quite a good example of one where I'd say you need to get a little bit of knowledge or maybe go to a popular spot and give it a go but um, I think it's so, so rewarding. And I think even people who maybe aren't sure if they like cold water, you know, you can try it in a wetsuit, you can try it in summer. But I think it's I think it's absolutely magical. I was reading a great blog post that you wrote, which was how it feels to try ice swimming Scandinavian <laughs> style. Um, taking a dip in the ice in Arctic Sweden. I mean, I'm so, I think I'm starting to shiver just, uh, just thinking about that and that ice cold water. But could you tell us more about that experience? So I think I'm right in saying that in um, Scandinavia, swimming in cold water is really kind of recognised as being very good for you physically. And I believe it's because the understanding is that if you um, if you kind of take a quick dip in very cold water, it actually boosts your immune system. Um, and it's just it's meant to be very good for you. And I knew that people also say that after you've been in, in really icy cold water, you feel very alive, you feel very tingly, you feel great. Um, I've tried it a few times. I tried it in Sweden and I tried it in Greenland in really, really cold kind of ice ice strewn water and um it is absolutely amazing you do have to muster up the courage to um to jump in um but and it does feel it does feel quite strange because you your body kind of doesn't really know what's hit it so you feel you almost don't feel cold or hot you feel your body's just kind of in a little bit of shock but um once you get out you do feel absolutely amazing you feel really really tingly and warm and alive and it just feels fantastic um so even if you don't stay in for very long it is great and um you can also try if you're ever in Scandinavia they um they do um a really cool thing where you you hop in the sauna and get really warm and then you jump into ice cold water and then you immediately get back in the sauna and you do that a few times and your body just never has has time to feel that cold to be honest and it is it is fabulous so it is worth the plunge even if just to try it once <laughs> oh, amazing amazing tell me more about cycling sort of what, what sort of cycling have you done sure well, I cycle all the time actually just to get around I try and cycle whenever I can and not use my car just for I guess for environmental reasons and fitness reasons but I mean I think most people cycling around the city isn't there's not a lot of joy in that for me but what I do love is to get out on my road bike or on a mountain bike and just just get kind of get into wild places um I like road cycling but increasingly I like to road cycle on quiet little country roads and there's actually some great guidebooks that are all about finding those kind of peaceful B roads um and I think with cycling I do I love walking and hiking but there's something really really lovely about kind of rolling along on a bike and and kind of you know tacking hills and then just freewheeling down hills and um it's a really great way to explore um as I said I live reasonably close to Wales and you know the winding roads of Wales are just an absolute joy if you're on a bike you can explore the Black Mountains and the Brecon Beacons for a day and it's just a fabulous way to to get out yeah and cycling was something I was quite road cycling especially I was quite intimidated by and that was another thing where I had a friend who was a much more experienced cyclist and I basically forced her to take me all the time while I worked on my confidence and worked on my I don't know navigation and wrote, um, fixing my bike skills which I'm still not very good at and um, yeah it's just that thing of getting out and out until you've got that little base of confidence to feel like you can get out alone and and you know what you're doing. Um, yeah so I love getting on my bike I think that's another really good way to like while swimming or hiking, it's one of those ways to put down your laptop, put down your phone, get out in the natural world and be really be in the landscape that you're exploring and and get a, a mood lift and a physical lift. So, yeah, I absolutely love it. To be honest, there's not a lot. <laughs> there's not many activities that I don't love if they let me get outdoors. I tend to just think I'm a huge fan of them all. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes the problem is like trying, trying to fit them all in. 
Well, I actually think it's really, I'm, I'm probably, I don't think I could be one of those athletes who trains all day, every day for one sport that they love. I think I'd get really bored. I think I love the mix. Um, I'm not very good at any of the sports I do, but I love them all so much and I really like mixing them up. And I think it's quite nice for your body too, because it kind of, it's a nice way to train your body if you're doing different things every day. Do you train? Like, I, I, know, I know that sounds weird, but, but I feel as though you're, you're so active and, and involved in so many, like, sort of different sports and that you're always sort of out and about, whether that is cycling, you know, using your bike to commute or, you know, hiking in the hills or, or going out surfing. Are, are you also, so do you, are you a member of a gym or is, or is that not sort of part of your world? Yeah, I actually, I go to the gym all the time. I just don't really um, write about it much because I feel like it's not really outdoors. I don't know. I'd normally rather be outdoors, but I do find the convenience of having a gym. It is useful if I've just hopped to work or whatever, or I just have, a, you know, an hour in the evening. So I will go to the gym quite a lot. And I, I try and work on um, uh, just on just, you know, a good general base fitness, because I find that really easy if I have to go traveling at a moment's notice to do something like cycling or hiking. It's just good to know that I'm kind of reasonably fit. I also do a lot of yoga. There's a lovely yoga studio ne- near me. And I find that really, really good for stretching and kind of relaxing the muscles that tend to get pretty tight with all the other activities I do. Um, and then what I also do most of the time for kind of keeping fit is I go trail running if it's um if I've got the time for an hour or two uh, I play football very casually and I go climbing and those are actually my kind of my week in week out ways of staying fit um and and again I think that yeah that shows that I'm, I'm not very good at concentrating on one sport I like I like lots of different ways to keep fit but um I I actually find I get quite antsy if I don't work out most days um so I think even just for my mental health I find working out really really helpful really relaxing um it stops me feeling anxious it stops me feeling worried about work I find I sleep a lot better so it's it's just as much of a mental as well as physical gain but um I definitely I kind of just got to the point where I really need exercise in my life so I always try and fit in a little bit. I'm awesome when I'm at home because I can get into such a great routine that I'm like, boom, yes, gym, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, rest days, get my massages in. I'm I'm sort of on fire. When I start traveling or I'm visiting, like if I'm heading down to London or heading down to Bristol or going to different events and I'm out and about, I can really struggle to, to sort of fit it all in when I'm not in sort of my usual routine now you do do a lot of traveling so how do you stay fit and healthy when you're when you are out and about traveling around the world and and you know doing all the work that you that you do which I know is outdoorsy but do you understand what I'm asking like how do you yeah how do, how are you keeping fit while you're traveling Absolutely. And it is a big challenge. And I'm also I'm not the best at diet. I have days where I eat really well and days where I just eat chocolate. I'm (laughs) I'm quite sporadic with eating well. Um, And when you're working out, I think you can get away with it. But when you're traveling, you do need to be you need to be much more on staying fit. And it is a huge challenge. But um, the things I have found are really useful are uh, packing my my running trainers, because if you're in a city or a new place or just, you know, in a country location that you can map, you can figure out some really nice runs. And also running is actually a really lovely way for me to explore a new place if I think it's quite safe I'll just find um, a route on Google Maps and just go for a run and I find it a really nice way to explore and get my bearings Um, and then I also pack my swimsuit and if there's any way you can swim I'll always um, do a few laps and I also have a travel yoga mat which I think is probably my favorite thing to you know like my one of my best buys for traveling Um, it folds up small and it means that you can do yoga wherever you are you know anywhere you're staying just for half an hour even so I'll just get up a YouTube yoga video and just do a routine and I find that really really helpful especially if I'm really frazzled from lots of traveling or jet lagged just a bit of yoga can really really help you feel better so I'm definitely not as good but I think taking your kit with you and finding ways that you can kind of just get out and get a little bit of exercise in are really really useful when you're traveling for sure what have you got coming up sort of for the for the remaining part of the year so I've just come back from months of traveling I feel like I haven't been at home <laughs> at all I've been in Alaska and then Italy and I've just got back from Switzerland so I'm actually now going to have a few weeks at home which I'm really happy about um so I'm going to do boring things like wash all my clothes and (laughs) and um, I've actually got a lot of work to catch up with so it's going to be a bit of a quiet a few weeks but um, I'm also planning lots of UK adventures now which as I said is secretly my favourite so um, I'm going to head to Scotland and I think do some camping and hiking um, because I think Scotland in the autumn is just the best it's just lovely so um, now that kind of September's looming I'm going to do head up to Scotland again and kind of get back on 
on keeping fit and get lots of wild swims in while it's still lovely weather because um it is it is a pleasure when it's warm weather to get in, you know it's much nicer getting in the sea yeah so I've just I always have a, a busy schedule but I just really like to make sure I I kind of block out days where I know I can get outdoors because I think otherwise life can just get so busy and you don't get that time so making that time for yourself is, is important yeah well, can you tell us more about what you were doing in Alaska yeah, for sure. So Alaska, um, I was there for two weeks and I was hiking and camping around and um, stayed in a mix of just normal campsites. And they have a lot of campsites that are just really kind of like wilderness spots where you can camp. And Alaska is just amazing because it really is. It's the wild. It's incredible because there's a tiny population of people living in a tiny kind of corner of it. And the rest is just absolute total wilderness. It's an amazing place. So I was really, really astonished by just to kind of see it and um, did a lot of hiking trails which are gorgeous or they do have to watch out for bears and moose um, which was quite interesting experience Um, and I just did tons of hikes Um, there's all these glaciers you can hike up to Um, did some some cycling some kayaking just just getting out and exploring and um, it's one of those places that I was really sad to leave Um, it was it was a real amazing place to explore. Was this a holiday or was this like a, a paid like work trip? This was a work trip yep so I'm going to be writing an article um, about just kind of exploring um, Alaska, hiking and camping and, and getting out in the national parks. So, so yeah, so most of my travels are for work. Um, and actually the travels where I, where I kind of go for myself, I t- quite often do very little, <laughs> kind of end up just, um, you know, reading books and relaxing or going on more gentle walks because my travel trips are often quite busy and um, really jam-packed itineraries, which I love, but they can be pretty knackering. So I love my travels, but I do also love coming home and having a break. <laughs> oh, absolutely, absolutely. Right, Sean, we're going to mix things up now. I'm going to be asking sure. you some quick fire questions. My questions may be quick, but your answers don't have to be quick. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you a morning person or evening person? Oh, probably evening. What time do you go to bed? Um, About 10, but I feel like kind of afternoon is when I feel I'm not very good in the mornings. I'm quite bleary. <laughs> so do you set an alarm or do you wake up naturally? I do. I probably wake up at um, probably about eight naturally and then I am fine. But, you know, if you try and wake me up at six and don't give me coffee, I'm not a very chatty person. <laughs> Got you. Well, my next question was going to be tea or coffee, but you've already answered that. So you're a coffee Absolutely person. Absolutely coffee. Yeah, for sure. What book are you reading at the moment? Oh, at the moment I'm reading Kim by Richard Kipling, which I've been meaning to read for ages. And um, I love, I read a lot. And I actually have a thing where I'll, I'll read a, like a kind of, you know, a, f- a fun book and then I'll read a more serious classic. So I tend to switch. So at the moment I'm on my on my classic, which is it's a lovely book, actually. It's about um, it's about India and it's, it's an incredible description of these gorgeous landscapes. And so I'm really enjoying that. Do you have a favourite movie? I really love Stand By Me. Have you ever seen that? No, what's that one about? It's really, really charming. It's about um, four young boys in kind of just the middle of nowhere in America, you know, small town America who go off on, they go off on a hike and it's it's a long story, but it's a really, really wonderful film. It's a beautiful, again, it's, you know, beautiful, wild America and it's all about their friendship and it's my mum's favourite movie and it's probably mine too. So it's not like a hugely outdoorsy movie, but it's about kind of hiking and camping and exploring. It's just, it's really sweet. So yeah, I think you'd really like it. What about music? Do you have like a favourite genre or type of music that you listen to? Yeah, I'm I'm really into folk. I really love folk music, um, which is something, you know, I think that's a bit of a Marmite kind of music. I'm a big fan of things like folk festivals. So kind of stuff like Seth Lakeman, uh, Johnny Flynn, Laura Marling. I really love all of that. And then kind of also more like classic English folk. Um, and yeah, there's some gorgeous festivals in the UK you can go to. Um, I think festivals are a really nice way to combine, you know, a bit of culture and that kind of outdoors lifestyle. So I like those in the summer too. And what about food? What's like your favourite food to eat normally? And what's your favourite food to eat to eat when you're out, sort of hiking or camping or out, you know, outdoors doing living your best life? Oh well, um, I've gone. I've tried to go veggie. I'm still eating fish, but just um, I've tried to cut up meat recently. So at the moment, I'm really into like nice vegetables. And I think if I'm at home, I tend to just make something like. It's a bit boring with something like veggie pasta. And I do secretly love chocolate. I'm just slightly obsessed. Um, and when I'm hiking, I really like making my own trail mix. That's really fun. And um, actually, what I always take hiking, it's more of a drink than food, is I always have proper coffee. That's like my my one thing. Even if I'm just taking everything else is really basic or I'm eating ration packs, I'll always have a, a way of making proper coffee. It's like my, my little comfort thing when I'm camping. 
I think this next question could be quite interesting because I know you do write kit reviews for the girl outdoors. Do you have a favorite piece of kit or favorite piece of gear or what what are you loving at the moment? Oh yeah well I actually have a few bits of gear that I've had for years and years and years that I just absolutely love and um, one is my pair of Scarpa Peak hiking boots and they're quite expensive they're over 100 pounds but I actually just bought a new pair of myself because I love them so much. They're so comfortable. They're waterproof. They've got really bouncy soles. You know, I've been up so many mountains in them. So I always, I love them. And I think with hiking boots, you've got to find a brand that fits your feet well. But once you do, I do really recommend buying a few pairs because you don't know if they're going to make them forever. Um, and I also have a North Face backpack that I've had for so many years. And it's, I don't even know what color it was originally, but it just does the job. It's, they're really tough and worth the investment. And I always think of those two as kind of my, my long term favorite bits of kit and I'm also I've also just um, reviewed a Haglofts waterproof jacket which I think is absolutely brilliant so that's my new favorite it's Hagloff waterproofs are really waterproof really comfortable really nicely you know they fit really well so that's another top tip are you a mountains mountains person or a beach person oh that's such a hard question I think it has to be mountains what do you do for rest and relaxation so yoga um reading uh what else um i do i could do a bit of knitting in the winter yeah those are probably my my three nice glass of wine (laughs) (laughs) red or white or rosé oh red definitely (laughs) do you have like a mantra or a quote that you live your life by or words that have really sort of inspired you um, well, I have I have one. I have two. Can I have two? You can have two. Absolutely. <laughs> so there's one which I believe was Lady Blessington. And she said, there's no cosmetic for beauty like happiness. And I always think that's really, really true. And I think especially as women, we're all, there's a quite a lot of pressure to, I don't know, to look or be a certain way. And I just think if you just if you're happy and you're doing what you love, you will look and feel happy. And I think that's just the most important thing. And the other one I like is so it's been, I'm not 100% sure that it's, it is John A. Shedd who said it, but I think he's, he's, it's attributed to him the most. But it's, um, a ship in harbour is safe, but that's not what ships are for. And I think that's so lovely because it's that idea that, you know, you only have one life and you only have one body and you could stay at home but and be safe. But if there's things you really want to, you'd love to do and you're itching to get outside and you want to achieve things and push yourself, you've got to go for it because, there's so much out there and there's such an exciting world on your doorstep so you've got to just kind of go out and 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 live life as much as you want and you know live a wild life so those are probably my two that I think of if I'm feeling a bit rubbish and I don't feel like going on a hike (laughs) what's on your bucket list what what are the what are the challenges or adventures that you'd like to do but maybe you haven't done done yet or you feel that they're a little bit intimidating at the moment Sure. I'm I'm actually, I'm scared all the time. I think people always think I must be really confident, but I actually think I'm, I'm quite afraid of lots of things. I'm afraid of the dark. I'm not very good. (laughs) But um, I always think, you know, even if you feel that kind of thing of being fearless, I think it's it's rubbish, really. I think you just have to feel the fear and and, and just carry on and and do it scared. So I'm always kind of looking for new challenges and I love trying new things. Um, I've tried a lot of what I've always wanted to do. I'd like to do some more traveling in South America and I would like to do more wild camping and multi-day trips on my own because I've done hikes on my own and I've camped on my own. But I'd just like to do maybe even like a week where I went hiking, even something like a coast path and took my tent and just just had some time on my own and and worked again on that confidence of being alone because I've done stuff like I stayed in a body last year I think for the first time on my own and it is quite scary doing stuff like that I think especially if you're a woman you've kind of you've kind of sadly had that kind of message so many times that that these things are dangerous and I think getting over that and and finding confidence doing stuff alone is something I still need to work at um so yeah so more camping and hiking by myself I think is is um, probably my next challenge yeah and Sharp, what advice and tips would you give for women and girls listening to inspire them to be I'm trying to link it to like the wild girl the wild girls <laughs> guys I was going to say to be more wild but you know <laughs> what advice would you leave for women and girls who want to to spend more time outdoors they want to get outdoors they want to have more adventure travel um in their life yeah I think I think 
write down a list of things that you would love to do, but because you truly think they'll make you happy, not because you think you have to do anything gnarly or difficult. Write down things you'd love to do more of or that you know make you happy. And then write down the first step to trying those things. So, oh, I'd really love to try wild camping. Okay, well, could you go wild camping this weekend somewhere local just for a night? Or I'd really love to go surfing. Well, maybe you could find a surf course for a weekend and sign up for it or find somewhere that does a beginner lesson that you could do next time you're on holiday. Just write down that list and then just see if you can start ticking them off and and fitting them into your life. And I think, yeah, making making time for the outdoors and for wild places is really important. Just making blocking that time off in your in your busy life is important too. And remembering that even if you don't feel like maybe you have friends who want to go out and do these things with you, there's amazing communities you can join. Um, there's even things like Facebook groups. There's there's courses there's loads and loads of ways you can try those things and there are loads of like-minded people and you don't need to be a pro and you don't need to be mega sporty you can get out and you can do them and I think yeah just just taking that first step and working out what you'd love to do more of and then just getting out and doing it I know it sounds it's easier said than done but I think it's so important and it is just such a good way to feel happy I think in, in you know in increasingly quite stressful busy lives that we lead finding a bit of time to be in the wild is just such such an important thing to do for yourself thank you sean no problem and where's the best place that people can find more information about you and follow your blog and read your reviews and active guides and travel information so um best is probably my blog thegirloutdoors.co.uk and my instagram which is at sean anna lewis and i share all my kind of articles and new things that are going on on there and um if you'd like to buy my book you can find it on amazon um the girl outdoors and it's just it's a really it's a nice place to start if you're feeling like you need a bit of a helping hand to kind of getting outdoors traveling and trying new new sports and activities sean thank you so much for coming on to our podcast to share more about your journey and the girl outdoors and just inspiring us all with your travel and adventure stories thank you for having me Hey Tribe, I hope you enjoyed the episode with Sean. What an absolute legend. So as always, everything that we've discussed today is available in the show notes at toughgirlchallenges.com. So please do go and check it out. And actually a couple of months ago, or it might have actually been when her book came out, I actually gave away a copy of Sean's book as a prize for patrons. So what I do with patrons who are the financial supporters of the podcast, at the end of every single month, there is a patrons prize draw and every single patron from $2 to $25 gets their name put in that draw automatically and then prizes are won at the end of the month and get sent out to you wherever you are in the world and so a massive thank you to everybody who has signed up as a patron who is supporting me financially and supporting the mission of the tough girl podcast i just want to take a moment just to say um, a couple of really really big thank yous i want to say a massive thank you to ellen piercy deborah holt Kachur Lunaire, Sarah Bright, Tara Geiger, and Zoe Langley Watham. I really do appreciate all of your support. Thank you so much. Like, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, what you are doing is incredible. And you are helping me to increase the amount of female role models out there. You're allowing me to share these amazing stories, which in turn allows more women to hear them, to get inspired, and to go out there and to live a life with more adventure in their life. Just want to share something else as well. So we talked about communities, and I have the closed Facebook group, The Tough Girl Tribe, which is for the patrons the female patrons who support the podcast it's you know it's a fantastic environment very supportive very very encouraging also just want to mention another community this is especially if you are uk based then please do go check out the adventure queens and their website is adventurequeens.co.uk i'm just going to tell you a little bit more about it so um anna anna mcnuff and emma um emma Framps are the founders of Adventure Queens. It's a UK-based, not-for-profit women's adventure community set up with the aim of delicately smashing down the barriers that prevent women from heading off on adventures. They provide practical information, tips, and advice on all things wild camping and the great outdoors. So little by little, bit by bit, Adventure Queens is helping women from the UK and beyond have the confidence to get out there and get wild. So there's lots of these organizations about. So it's about finding that community that works well with you. And by the way, it's totally okay to be a member of the Adventure Queens 
queens and to be a member of the tough girl tribe there's there is no competition at all it's all about collaboration it's all about encouragement it's all about finding your tribe and your community so i just want to make sure that you are aware that that is out there they do lots of wild camping events and they also run like an adventure queens grant as well that's a yearly thing so please do go check out adventurequeens.co.uk again if you're completely new to the tough girl podcast then please do go check out toughgirlchallenges.com where you can find more information about me my background the different challenges and adventures that I've done and the work that I'm doing in this space to increase the amount of female role models out there it's something that I'm incredibly passionate about and I just want to say a big thank you again to all my amazing patrons big hugs big kisses from the bottom of my heart if you haven't signed up as a patron yet please do please do go visit patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash tough girl podcast now wherever you are whatever you are doing have an awesome day give it 110% get after it and go for it please believe in your yourself believe in yourself because i believe in you you can do it all right take care and i'll be back with you next tuesday for another awesome episode of the tough girl podcast take care lots of love bye